Good afternoon, ladies and distinguished guests. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for honoring the invitation to be here. We're about to start. It's 12.33 now. So um, I just, I've had a few discussions with some ladies this afternoon and people want to understand how this mentoring thing works. I'm going to implore that you pre pretend that you're in a room having a one-on-one -on -one with our guest speaker. So you're not here on a table with other people. You're not here in a room with other people. You're not here for the lecture series. You're here for a one-to-one -one mentoring session with the guest. So zone in, get your pad, notepads out, take your notes, and use this opportunity to drill out as much as you want from him in the period that he's going to be here today. To get straight to the point, I'm going to invite the chairperson of the Executive Council of Wimbis, Mrs. Bumi Aboderin Talabi, to make her opening remarks. And um, once she's done, I'm sure by the time she's done and the Wimbi Wimboard presentation is being done, our guest speaker will be here. So we'll just roll through. We're not going to take a break from once we start. So please welcome Mrs. Aboderi Talabi with a warm round of applause. Thank you, Ronke. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, ladies, it's mainly ladies, okay, ladies, gentlemen, members of the press, welcome to the first Wimboard mentoring um, session that we're going to have ever. And um, of course, as you know, the speaker today is Dr. Obao Tudeko. The purpose of this uh, intimate gathering is to give us an opportunity to come face to face with someone who has vast boardroom experience and ask questions. We may not get such an opportunity again, um, so let's determine to ask as many questions and pull as much knowledge and wisdom um, and emotional intelligence as possible. So. I know that most of us in here are Wimboard fellows. We've passed through the Wimboard program in one way or another. But for the benefit of those who are unfamiliar with Wimboard and what Wimbiz um, is working on, we have a short presentation. So if you could just roll that. So the Wimboard program is all about promoting gender inclusive boards organizations and of course in society as general. So why are we here? Women suffer underrepresentation in education, business, policy circles, despite equal levels of graduate, um, uh, graduate education, graduate level education, and uh, in spite of growing numbers and, and other educational attainments. In Nigeria, men dominate the political, educational, economic, and social landscapes. And this, of course, leads to some sort of uh, inequality and female exclusion. So Wimbiz launched an advocacy platform. We launched a concept paper, which was not published until the survey on female representation on boards of publicly listed uh, companies was completed. And we conducted an empirical survey of women's representation on boards of companies quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, as well as 20 non-quoted but significant to high revenue yielding private limited liability companies in Nigeria. In addition, DCSL did a gender diversity survey. And I just want to draw your attention to their findings. They looked at 137 companies, and those 137 companies had 915 directors. Out of that number, 128, that's, uh, 
I hate the word measly, but that's what comes to mind. Um, the, a minute 14 percent um, of that number of female. That means 86 percent are male. There's 787 male directors. Now, how does that figure compare with the United States? In the United States, the figure is currently about 19 percent, and in Europe, the figure is currently about 30 percent. Now. What accounts for that disparity? It's policy, it's affirmative action, it's legislation. So governments have said, this is what you must do. You need to have X percentage of women on your board or in your leadership and companies comply. And some companies have also set themselves those targets that we're going to have X number of women. So targets work, affirmative action in this instance actually works and we hope to see a similar thing in Nigeria. And a poster child for such action in Nigeria is the Nigerian banking sector. So I don't know how many uh, ladies in here work in the banking um, industry but the banking sector is leading the way in Nigeria. They have 22% of their leadership, of their board membership as female. And that, again, was because of a specific policy that was instituted during the time of um, when L SLS was the uh, CBN governor. He mandated that 40% of leadership in banks should be female. And, I mean, they didn't quite reach 40, but they're at 22%, which is significantly higher than the Nigerian average. So legislation works, policy change works. And just a little bit of background. The reason why that even happened was because Wimbiz made a presentation and brought the facts to light. So all of these um, talks that we give, these events that we have, these slides uh, that we show, they actually do have an impact because a policymaker, someone in charge, saw, I mean, heard what we had to say, and it, he caused a change in the sector that he was in charge of. So please keep talking, keep advocating, and keep talking about why, keep, keep explaining the benefits of a diverse board um, to anyone who will listen. So our findings, um, Wimbiz has a due diligence survey that looks at uh, representation on boards of companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, as I mentioned earlier. And um, it was launched in 2013, and it's been updated since then. But the findings uh, typically showed that about 10%, 10.5% of directors were female, and 89.5% were male. That was back then. And uh, in terms of the CEOs, 6%, only 6% of the CEOs of NSE listed companies at, at that time were female, 94% were men. So the, 20, the survey that was done in 2016 is currently being compiled, um, and I'm sure as soon as those results come out, we'll all be interested in finding out how the needle has moved, hopefully in the right direction. Now, why are diverse boards beneficial? Research has shown that there is improved performance, more innovation, there's an enhanced quality of decision making when the board is not um, homogeneous in gender. There's better utilization of the talent pool, obviously. There's deeper customer intelligence because both genders are represented in the decision making room. And there is an improved quality of corporate governance and ethics. Apparently, researchers found that boards that have more women tend to make, tend to make less um, ethical mistakes or tend to make less moves towards things that might be deemed unethical. So it's a good safety net having women on board because they can temper those who are you know, a little bit more adventurous. Now, women are good for the bottom line. Organizations with the most diverse um, uh, gender mix um, in their corporate officer ranks financially outperform companies with the least gender mix. So this is an international, these are the results of an international study. So it showed that the more diverse the company, the more likely they are to be in the top percentile 
of financial performers, of revenue earners, revenue generators, excuse me. So they found about a 35% differential between those who have strictly, you know, one gender boards compared to those whose boards were, were mixed. Moving on, in Nigeria, we've already talked about uh, the change that was instituted by the central bank. Ogun State, I'd like to talk about um, Ogun State for a little bit. Yes, Ronke. <laughs> so um, Ogun State is the poster child for um, gender inclusion. There are, to my understanding, 13 ladies in the Ogun State cabinet. And from what I can see, it is one of the most progressive states um, where things get done. Uh, and I think it, it's in no small part due to the fact that there are women on, um, uh, in the cabinet. And also, of course, they have a, a governor that understands why that's important. And we hope that more states will, will um, we hope that more states will emulate what Ogun State is doing and have more women in their cabinet. And along those lines, the national gender policy actually recommends a minimum of 35% um, of women being in all leadership um, circles at all levels. And we hope to see that happen in 2019. So um, for those of us that have the energy or the interest in running, please run because the law is actually on your side. <laughs> please run. Now, so Wimboard has four platforms. The first one being the Wimboard Institute, and that is the training arm. We have, um, we have a program, one with LBS, one with um, IE in Madrid, that in conjunction with Wimbiz, they train women who are you know, either seeking to be on boards or women who are already on boards and just want to enhance their, their qualifications. The first set, I mean, the Institute was launched in 2015 and um, we had the first set. I think if you were part of the first set of Wimboard fellows, please raise your hand. So, see, there you are. I believe they call themselves the, the Flamingos. <laughs> then, then we have the second set of Wimboard Fellows. So if you're part of the second set, please raise your hand. Second set, that would be 2016. I believe you call yourselves the Amazon, the what? 10 Con 10. 10 Con 10? Okay, yes, yeah, somebody asked what does that mean? I share their curiosity. A popular restaurant in Madrid, I like that, yes. And then if you're part of the third set of Wimboard um, fellows, please raise your hand. Yes, I believe you call yourselves the Amazons, the amazing Amazons. And the fourth set, I think is, yes, that's us. I raised my hand as well. Yay, they're my ladies, yay. So yeah, we, um, we're, we're currently going through, um, yeah, we're the game changers, that's our name. And we're currently going through the Wimboard process um, right now. We highly recommend it, um, but we understand that you know the, the cost of the program may be prohibitive to some. So Wimbiz has actually come up with um, a package, or Wimbiz is, is going to launch a package that um, will be more, let's say, budget friendly. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure Ms. Fuluke will tell us more about that in due course. So that's one platform of Wimboard. The second platform is the executive database. So currently we have about 342 women on that database and they are a pipeline of board ready women. These are women who are um, qualified, competent, interested in sitting on boards. So when Wimbiz gets a call and says, we're looking for someone who is you know, in HR, who's from this state, who is this, is that, we simply look through our database and then we make a recommendation um, or several recommendations and then the companies pick you know, from, from the recommendation. So the executive database, you should find out more about how to get on it if you're not on it already. Then the third platform is the advocacy platform. 
which is when we go and make presentations to various companies um, and organizations to let them know the benefits of having more women amongst their leadership. The fourth platform is the mentoring, which is what we are here for today. The, the mentoring platform is open to not only Wimboard Fellows, but anyone who wants to learn more about what it means to be on a board, what it takes to be on the board, what it takes to be a woman on the board, how to, how to not only survive, but thrive. Before I wrap up um, my presentation, I just want to use this opportunity to introduce the heads of the various WIM board um, subcommittees. So I see two of them are here. Um, Mrs. Bimbola Wright is the head of the, is the working committee. Yeah, please, a round of applause for Mrs. Wright. Ms. Folukwa Boderi is head of the Wimboard Institute, so it's her team that's working on putting together the new package. And Mrs. Fumi Roberts is the overall chairperson of um, the Wimboard group. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're clapping for her. She goes to welcome our guest. So that's about it, just to give you a little bit of an overview of Wimboard. Any questions? Okay, in the absence of questions, I'm going to hand over to the MC. Where's uh, Ronke? Ronke? Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy the afternoon. Thank you very much, Mrs. Abodere Talabi. I believe our guest is here. But um, while we wait for him to come in, Mrs. Um, Zakios is going to be doing the introduction when she comes in. Thank you very much, Amazing Amazons, Flamingos. Flamencos. Excuse me, Flamencos, Game Changers, and then the 10 something 10, the rest of the eaters. I identify with the eating group because I'm a foodie. Um, today is quite unique in the fact that, you know, this is our first time doing this. And there's a particular session that is going to come up after the, um, inter um, after the speaker finishes. It's called the interactive session. I will advise that you write down your questions so that it's efficient and so that as many people as possible get to ans ask their questions. Because um, when we come on and um, we go on and not articulate what we want to say, we're robbing other people of the opportunity to ask questions. And for whatever reason, if somebody's already asked your question, just cross it off your list and then you know, we can just move along very swiftly with the program. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the introduction of the guest speaker, then he's going to go through boardroom experiences and then the interactive session. And you're going to have a form, an evaluation form that you're going to have to fill out for us. It's very, very important that you know, we all fill that form out so that we know what to continue, what to discontinue, and how to move along. And if there are suggestions on how to improve on what we're trying to achieve, we would like to hear from you as well. Um, the, even, the afternoon is very quick. I'm sure we'll be done by 3 o'clock, because I know people are already looking at their wristwatches to see we are on time. We will finish at quarter to 3 if everything remains constant, unless for whatever reason you all want to ask more questions and the speaker is willing to ask, answer more questions from us. Um, we'll just wait for a few more minutes to um, allow the guests come in and the rest of the executive council who've gone to meet him downstairs. Meanwhile, one of the things that we really pride ourselves for in Wimbis is networking. I don't know if everybody knows everybody on their table. Does everybody have their business cards here? Hello? Hello? Do we all have our business cards here? I'm amazed at how women sit together and don't know each other. Hello, please, who doesn't have their business cards here? If you leave men in the bathroom for five minutes, five minutes, if men go to the bathroom for five minutes, they'll come back and tell you who each man in every stall was, what he does, and the deals they're putting together. 
excuse me, table two, the Honeywell table. You all know each other, so don't stay on your table. Honeywell table, you all know each other. So it is not right for you guys to all be on that table sitting right now. Please, can you get to meet the Honeywell table? That's the Honeywell table, that one. Please welcome our guest speaker with a warm and rousing applause to let him know that he's appreciated and that we're going to get as much as we want out of him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you. I'm going to welcome one of our, the members of our board of trustees, Mrs. Yewande Zakias, to introduce our speaker. Please give Mrs. Zakias a warm round of applause. We welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Obautudeko CFR. Good afternoon, ladies, and welcome again. We are delighted to have so many of you here today. It gives me great pleasure to read the profile of our guest speaker of today. And at the end of uh, the profile, I'm going to give a little anecdote just to show that indeed he is somebody who walks his talk. Dr. Obautudeko CFR is founder and chairman of Honeywell Group and also group chairman FBN Holdings PLC. He is a former Nigerian entrepreneur and visionary, reputed for his highly successful domestic and foreign investments that cut across diverse sectors of the economy. He served on the board of First Bank between May 1997 and December 2010, when he retired as chairman. He was also the chairman of FBN Bank UK Limited, Fan Milk of Nigeria PLC, and Airtel Nigeria. He has at various times served on the boards of Central Bank of Nigeria, Guinness, Nigeria PLC, British American Tobacco Limited, and Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, headquartered in Lume, Togo. Between September 2006 and August 2009, he was the 16th President and Chairman of Council of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Dr. Oba Otudeko holds the Nigerian National Honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, CFR, awarded in 2011. Professionally, he is a chartered banker, a chartered accountant and chartered corporate secretary. Dr. Oba Otudeko has also attended executive management training programs at International Institute for Management Development, Lausanne, Switzerland, the Harvard Business School, Boston, USA, and then the Arthur D. Little School of Management in the USA. He was Chancellor of the Olabisi Onabanjo University, Agoiwoyi, Ogun State, from 2001 to 2010, and currently serves as a member of the Office of Distinguished Friends of the London Business School, UK. Dr. Obautudeko is the founder of Obautudeko Foundation, a not-for-profit organization, and he's married with children. I think it's absolutely clear that if we were looking for somebody to mentor us at the very first session, we could not have a more highly accomplished individual. And as I say, Apart from the fact that if you look at many of the companies that he's represented on, women feature prominently on the boards. But not only on the boards does it matter to him, it matters to him also about how we do in our businesses. I recall uh, a few years ago when I was going to start a new initiative that required sponsorship. And it was a food fair. And of course, Honeywell, I thought, look, I wanted to have an indigenous company represented. And it was, be, it was so difficult to get anybody to even understand. I finally got a hold of Dr. Tutego. And he said to me, okay, we're having an AGM, come along to the meeting. After the meeting, he literally summoned all the directors into a little room and practically just said to them, this is who she is, this is what she's doing, and you are going to support her. And that was the end of that. That is Dr. Tudeko for you. So with a lot of respect, I want to please ask Dr. Oba Tudeko to please come to the stage and give us his guest speech.
Good afternoon, distinguished ladies. How have we done it that there are no gentlemen? <laughs> huh? I don't want exclusivity. I want inclusiveness. <laughs> we have to be together because the world is such, so created that we are made to be together to help one another, complement one another. I apologize on behalf of the men that I kept you out for too long. And I want to assure you that I'm committed to having you included. And it is not patronizing. The truth is that you guys are better than us, even though I'm the one saying it. I have one who has been with me for about 50 years, and I can assure you that a judgment is always better than my own. <laughs> a commitment you can be rest assured about. And when she talks, you better listen to her because she's going to be proven right long after. So, why should we therefore miss? such talents that is so much around us. The thing about it is that you ladies, you actually don't speak for yourselves. I don't even think you support yourselves. If you supported yourself, we would have had a Nigerian president who is a lady by now. But I see it coming. And this thing happened in my presence before my very eyes. Those people who are your trustees now, whoever of you remember starting at Guru Dion Street, they were coming there. They were coming there. They were coming there, who and who. I can't see any one of them here, but I remember them. My own Assignment this afternoon is actually containing most of the remarks that I have made. But you want to hear what it is all about my life? I want to say that a lot of people shaped my life. These people were the compass that guided my journey. They came, sometimes they whispered, other times the family raised their voices only when they needed to. Most importantly, they responded to nature's plan and purposes for my life. Whichever is our religion, I am convinced that we know that our lives have been shaped by God. The Bible says that before we were formed in our mother's wombs, he knew us. He already has established who we will be. And those who are fortunate and lucky, they meet their mentors earlier in life. These mentors, sometimes they don't even know their responsibility. But the truth is that they've been given the assignments to pull your hands and bring you to sit at the table. You have the insight and the gift to recognize because you are ladies. When you see the mentors, you know them. And whoever is lucky has gotten the good mentor and knows the mentor and work together, all of them will be working under the guidance of the Spirit of God and they'll be there just as it is because it is the will of God. In my own case, um, I was a young child of an old man. My mother was a young wife of a gentleman who was quite old. He had me at the age of 62. And my father's friends, like I also keep young friends, came and one of them, now deceased, died at 102. 
I remember him saying to me in Yoruba, Ameni Tomashi, meaning that nobody knows exactly who, what the destiny of anybody is. I said, but why did you say that? He said, ah, I remember after we've uh, named you and we're going home under the influence of Jim, <laughs> we said, what son was this person still having at this age of uh, whatever it was? Because 62 at that time, 75 years ago, was a jolly old age. Not now, now like this, that uh, young men like me can still be bombing and jumping. <laughs> but, but the truth is that I, I came and I've been working very hard. I'll be 75 in, the, in two months' time, and I'm still available for more assignments. My journey has taken me to be the to be on the board of Cooperative Bank of Western Nigeria many, many years ago, 1970. I was on the board in 1972. Then I was the bank secretary. And I, I was there with uh, old people. They were cooperators. Then I've been on the board of First Bank, as you were told. I'm still on the board of FBN Holdings, Echo Bank Transnational. Whoever remembers Econet is <laughs> here till today. I was there. And when you smile, I'm going to talk about that. You need to have a sense of the summit, and you must be an extremely dedicated and committed person, strong-minded and strong-willed to succeed. Airtel, we all know, I was on the board of Ikeja Hotels PLC, British American Tobacco, Farm Milk, Guinness, Honeywell and Gas, Radisson, I'm still there, Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigerian Stock Exchange, she was there with me. Yes, yeah, she was there. London Business School, and now I am on the office of Distinguished Fellows. And I was Chancellor of the Olavisi Onobanjo University. Whatever name you give to it, serving on boards is servanthood. You must recognize that. It's a serious business call. The duty of the director, we can see increasingly much more so now, that the director has a fiduciary duty the duty of good faith. Your principal constituency is the constituency of the owners. But these days, there are quite a few st stakeholders who are interested in the success of companies. Of course, ranging from the government to the customers, to the workers, the shareholders who are the owners of the company. And I want to put one more by way of addition. Your own pedigree. You are all responsible for your father's names or your husband's names that you are, you are carrying. So, the duty of the director is a very, very serious one. It is a call to extended responsibility, and therefore the director must be knowledgeable 
and honorable individuals. It's a call that is only fit for kings and I dare say for queens. As I said, my first board experience was in 1972. That's 28 plus 18. That gives me 46 years. The election process, we all know how, how, how the process takes place. But the first and foremost point of call is the individual director candidate. Meaning the pedigree, that is the name, the qualification, which is very important, the experience, and something that is really critical is that being a director is not just about what you know, is about your ability of being able to play in it, to work together in a team. Therefore, you must be a good team player without surrendering your principles. You must be gentle and persuasive such that in the process of you playing your role, you also are a positive impact. Possibly sometimes you must have what my friends here, my colleagues here, know what it is called kappa. Kappa. You must have capacity. Your capacity for understanding people, because everybody in a group certainly has come not only with his father's or mother's, sorry, or husband's name, but we all have interests. Everybody in life has some interest. So an ability to be able to subject personal interest to group interest is an important attribute that the director must have. You'll be wondering how would a young man survive amongst old men? And when I say old men, we being where we come from, Yorubas, we also come under every cultural background. Because you can see how people are sort of kind of reacting to me. That is our culture. You know, they have to respect, they have to respect, they have to hold themselves. You can respect people, but at the same time, you also must never forget what your primary assignment is. Evolution and the importance of people come with time. But at the end of the day, individuals who will be leaders, because there will be a chairman amongst the directors. The best chairman is one that evolves by general consensus because the chairman is just first amongst equals. But even though he's first or she is first amongst equals, she recognizes her position as the chairman, but I hope she knows that she's going to be very humble so that she can continue to earn the trust and respect of her colleagues. As I have said, a board position is a leadership position. Because as we know, the board of directors is the mainspring of the policies of the business. There are decisions that can make or mar the fortunes of a company are taken. Therefore, nothing short of an ideal leadership capacity is required in the boardroom. 
sound judgment based on knowledge, wisdom, and erudition, ability to make your points without appearing overbearing or self speaking too much about oneself. Board members might be what Brent Tracy calls transactional and transformational leader, transformational leaders. As leaders, board members must have the capacity to get things done through others, and they must also be visionaries, role models, and pathfinders of the companies they serve. A lot together in that. The character of the individual who is a director is the most important attribute. Being and having a seat around the table is a privilege. And that, like any gift of God, requires humility. A person who is humble will always be on top because people will have played into our hands who are not quite as humbled. Humility is no stupidity. And I want to repeat it over and over again. A good director who is humble, however knowledgeable, gets a lot of things done and helps to ensure that the group actually records outstanding success. Effective boards are assessed by the attributes of its members. A board will only be described as effective if it has worked with the executive team to reach strategic decisions which have supported long-term financial performance, improved brand value, attracted investors and generated returns for all the stakeholders. And never forget, don't get involved in less than best practices. It has a way of catching up. A board must have the right composition of members to be effective. Diversity is usually a strength of boards which I encounter all the time to put together a board that is effective and impactful requires identifying people of different disciplines and getting them together to be able to work together in order that the board will be rich in various experiences that are required to make companies to deliver the results. A company of I mean, having boards of only lawyers, accountants, without engineers, sometimes doctors, architects, may not be the right board. Diversity is always a strength. As an ad, a board, as I said, must have the right composition of members to be effective. And the issues you should look at are professionalism, relevant academic qualification, experience, exposure. Exposure is very important. There is something that I am sure all of us have noticed through interaction and exposure, people are able to feel at ease and comfortable to mix at all levels, at different levels, and get results out. Companies have strengths that are internal, but my experience confirmed to me that the external environment and its management contributes so much to the fortunes of companies. Therefore, people who will be leaders of companies are best 
masters of both the internal and external environments. People who have confidence in themselves. Knowledge. Of course, you all now know, many of you are on boards now know that being on the board, when we joined boards, used to be a club of boys. And most of the time, we always felt it was all pleasure and a little bit of work. Now, it is hard work to be on boards. I hope you, 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 you know that by now. I could see her nodding. I could see them nodding, those of my people who are here. Yes, <laughs> you can. Your husbands must be part of this decision because the sacrifices that your husbands will be called to make to support your success are, I want to assure you, are very unusual sacrifices. Now, in the past, we could be on the boards of six, eight companies. I doubt if anybody can be successful on more than three boards in today's corporate governance responsibilities. This is my feeling. Anybody who goes to look for more than two, two, three boards is putting herself under unnecessary stress. And I think at that level of stress, ineffectiveness and inefficiency can step in. Integrity, of course, and it's twin brother dependability. You don't get to boards without knowing people. It's not possible. It's a club to which you are invariably invited. That's the truth. You are invited to the membership. Therefore, in Yoruba land, water never forgets its source. Water that forgets its source, the river that forgets its source, they say will dry. I don't think anybody wants to dry. So when I say dependability, I mean loyalty. There must be a measure of loyalty, of course, boldness, and courage. Because from time to time, you are going to be confronted with difficult decisions. And when you are convinced that you are on the right course, a decision that is difficult requires boldness. The principal duty of the board is to sustainably build value for all the stakeholders. Therefore, I repeat once again, the management led by the CEO must work together in sync with the board of directors, not the executives. Inefficient boards are bingers of grave dangers for businesses. I'm sure some of us here are driving our businesses. At the end of the day, it's just like the home. It takes a good leader, one good leader, to make success of the home. The same thing of companies. Recorded history presents us with information on as well great businesses that ran into troubled waters because of leadership failure. You remember Siemens, the 1.3 billion of fines that was paid for global correction it would be an indiscretion at a particular level and it would not have been paid 
it would not have been decision would not have been taken without the board. Ali Botin is also a case in point. Boards become inefficient when they are when they fail to emplace and stress corporate governance and compliance requirements, or they fail to actively demonstrate their fiduciary duties to protect the organization's assets and interests of the shareholders, or they fail to provide visionary leadership, strategic direction, or fail to promote and entrench institutional management frameworks or they lose sight of their duties of accountability and responsibility to shareholders and other stakeholders. Boards of directors are a very, very, they are burdened with very important responsibilities. And it's, it's a serious business to be directors now is going to be increasingly more serious, which means, therefore, that directors should not be considered. Training is key. In some of the boards that I belong to, at least once or twice in a year, directors must go to strengthen their knowledge. And also, not just strengthen and enliven, make their knowledge more relevant. Because business is, is a dynamic process. As society changes and expectations of society also change, so will directors be required to react like part and parcel of a changing dynamics. Before it used to be a club of boys. Now, legitimately, you are part and parcel as a matter of fact, rules in various countries and capital markets insist that there must be a particular percentage of female membership in boards. It has come to stay. I, come, I believe that at some, at some stage there will be more members on boards who are women than men. But as it is now, you are already taking your places. And I am one of your champions. I have seen you as very dependable, very hardworking, our most serious board directors are usually women. At least on LBN Holding, I know one or two women who will read and read their board papers and they will tell you the page and the... <laughs> That's the way it should be. So, they are earning the position for the women on boards. Women are strong on their principles. Women have achieved impressive records as chairpersons and leaders of corporate organizations around the world. And some pictures are posted here that are recognizable to you. Some of you are now chairpersons, chairmen. I call somebody chairman. <laughs> chairman. <laughs> because I don't know that there's chairwoman 
<laughs> it's all chairman. Anytime I see the bear, I say chairman. I say, how is that? I say, okay. <laughs> the chair. We have our own Ibuku Awuchika, chairman, First Bank of Nigeria. That's a fact. And she's strong. She's representing you well there. I can confirm that. <laughs> chairman and president of IBM, she came and visited. I remember I met her at the Central Bank, Gini Rometi. And an extremely intelligent but simple woman, well presented and beautiful and you know but she makes massive impact because we are sitting together at the waiting room of the governor of the central bank and we bonded so well because we were there for about 15 minutes and she had so much by way of simple expression of her experience of traveling and what she what she she sees of Nigeria she's such, such, such an incredible personality I met her I've never met Indra Noye but we all know of her you know and Mrs. Demure also I know very well I'm sure many of you know her um, she's not that young she, we were together over the years when I was on the board on the central bank and the husband is also a bro. I think she she's a strong woman. Very, very strong woman. Being strong does not mean that she is capable of lifting ten tons. <laughs> <laughs> Women have consistently demonstrated skills, talents and capacities required in the composition of an ideal board of directors. So presence of women on corporate boards promote robust deliberations, disciplined approach to discussions, effective problem and conflict resolution and management, among others. And this is practical. What I've just said is practical. You know, um, when and where you have women, God created you so specially and gives you this intuition. If a woman tells you, my wife, if my wife, if somebody, one of those people who come to visit, if he comes to visit, mommy would give all assistance and entertainment and what have you. If after that person has gone, and mommy says, Arami, you must see man here. <laughs> you have to be careful <laughs> because sometime after, I promise you, the man will show signs <laughs> that mommy has seen long in advance. So, and this, uh, this is the gift that God has given you, you know, and especially coming to your level, settled, well respectable women. You are the stuff of which really tough and qualitative decisions will need to be made. Unlike men who are usually more direct, women from my experience consider options and seek alternatives, thereby ensuring rigorous approaches to decision making. Mostly women are not, they don't just jump. They take their time, they wait before they talk, and I have one or two of them, they will insist nicely, chairman, please listen to me. Chairman, let me talk now. <laughs> I know I, one of them or two of them, they are here. Say, chairman, please let us see this angle as well. And the comprehensive angle, properly ex ex exploit, explored, actually helps in the richness of decisions. As I said, you are naturally intuitive. Are there still barriers in the way of active participation of women on board? Of course. Of course. You will not be there when I'm there because I'm, I'm one of the boys. I don't think boys totally still uh, accommodate you on boards. 
So, I am for you, but not everybody is for you. So, this is good. This kind of platform is good in the sense that you must, especially when, you are, when the opening is not that very wide for you, you must do more than the ordinary to be there. You must claim it because it's your right. Claiming your right does not mean being nasty. It's doing it in a nice way. In a manner in which because I can see a number of you that I will jump to make or introduce to be directors or chairmen of boards. You have what it takes. But unless opportunities meet need, it will not happen. So that is why we also need God in the process. I do believe that we have all been made to be who we are and our destiny is in God's hand. Because those of you who know what I know, the thoughts of God towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil. So I've seen, yeah, I can see chairman of some of the top most companies in Nigeria already sitting down here. That is what I'm seeing. And you are on the path. Believe me, you are on the path. Being able to get yourself together. I told those of you who came, it's a fact, I was there when this thing started. As they say, like play, like play. Now it's become the real thing. So this is a forum that presents the opportunity to remove those barriers. Psychological, social, and cultural barriers still remain in the way of women's aspiration for leadership positions. Um, even in meetings, some people will say, ah, don't, don't call the women. Say, no. Say, we have to call them. Oh, these people are more than women now. <laughs> we need them. According to uh, this quarter of women on board report, the misplaced belief about women lacking the necessary interests and capabilities for pursuing ambitious career options and a mix of social and cultural factors have stood in the way of women aspiring to senior positions in the corporate world, or for that matter, in any other aspect of society. That is misplaced. The major obstacle which women need to overcome is that of public perception about their leadership abilities. There is no doubt at some point that the aspirations of women will need to be met, but I want to assure you, it's just like the discussion we were having sometimes last weekend somewhere. Say, is it not too young to do what? Not too young to rule. So I say, okay, not too young to rule. But that discussion, you know what our conclusion was? Power is never donated to anyone. No, never. Old men will keep power for as long as possible. It is when people take, you have to take. Power will be given to those who are proving that they can, they can handle it. And to take without appearing nasty is your responsibility. And there are prejudices, there are biases. Recruiting and preparing women for board leadership and management position is our clarion call, which is why I am here today. Because we need gender sensitivity to approximate to society's composition. You know, it used to be when we were having children, I mean people of my age, when 
when we had boys. Our bros said, so ah, muti bimo. <laughs> bros, bros, <laughs> bros is Yohannes' uh, father. He was my bros. We were really, really great friends. When we had boys, they say, muti bimo. He that wow wow. <laughs> Meaning that uh, we, we, we have had a child. When we had girls, I said, ah, so my kid, busy be more. I'm sure, I'm sure you understand. All of you understand. Whoever does not understand, you, you announce when you have a girl that my wife, my wife has had a child. <laughs> but if you had boys, I have had a, I have had a boy, I have had a son. You know, that is the prejudice. It will take time, but of course it's not the same. Now we've seen how well you ladies have done and how much more um, I, won't use, I don't like the, to use the word easier, but how much more amenable you are to you know, being brought up. The ladies are much, much easier to, to train, to bring up, much more dependable, and I'm sure we have to ask God for forgiveness for the that was that we did <laughs> and the ones we didn't do for the for the daughters gender sensitivity is obligatory now on boards of directors concerted effort is required to create more opportunities for women to be nominated onto boards of companies and other leadership roles in corporate and public corporations again i want to urge you as power is not donated, so also is the obligation to make yourself available for the assignment, meaning not marketing yourself, but let it be like here now. I think there must be establishment around you whereby information about available talents can also be put to the right um, fora so that the right people can be identified. Was just like people need appointments, so do people need also talents who should serve as directors. Concerted efforts is required to create more opportunities for women to be nominated onto boards and leadership roles. Women groups efforts, which is what we are witnessing here, awareness, sensitization, peer groups, professional associations, then state and institutional policies must be deri deliberately geared to identify, you know, apportion spaces for women as a deliberate policy. And of course, the government is now making efforts and you can see that ladies are. I remember in my office today, one visitor said she came back after 24 years to visit. And she said, Nigeria has changed. I said, what have you seen? Said, NPA managing director is a lady. That's what she noticed. I'm sure there are quite a few more changes that she should have noticed, but that's the one that appealed to her. Modest progress has been made in this regard. I said in 2008, Norway obliged listed companies to reserve at least 40% of their director seats for women, something which proved a model for many other European countries. In Canada, 50% of the board seats of the crown companies have to be reserved for women based on a quota legislation based in Quebec in 2006. 
In 2004, women made up 9.4% of board of FT FTSC 100 companies. This moved to 12 and a half in 2010. By 2017, the number of FTSC 100 companies with 33% of female representation on their boards increased to 28%. Isn't that wonderful? Women CEOs in the Fortune 500 list moved from 21 to 32 in 2017, and women chair boards of three out of the 22 banks in Nigeria. That's not good enough. I don't think that's good enough. Do you think that's good enough? No, that's a failure. Regulation and efforts by other stakeholders have greatly influenced this improved accent. But we have a lot more to do, especially in a part of the world, uh, in spite of religion and culture. Women must reinforce their position as builders, value creators, growth enablers to deserve board positions as of rights. It's your right now. Women have consistently demonstrated extraordinary mental, physical, and spiritual capacity in challenging situations. Of course, you all remember Rosa Parks, what Mother, Mother Teresa did, and Queen Amina. Women have earned reputation as home, community, and nation builders. Names like Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, Indira Gandhi, Margaret Thatcher. Is there anyone like Margaret Thatcher here? There will be so many. Given, given the opportunity, you will prove yourself. Women have demonstrated ability to create value and lead businesses. Oprah Winfrey, even Funke, Funke, where is Funke? Okay, maybe she's not there. You are this here. Bold, courageous, intelligent, brilliant, industrious, and resilient women will attract places on corporate boards and business leadership positions. It's only women who can add value to businesses that will break the barriers to board and leadership positions. And the opinions of people like Margaret Thatcher, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. That's Margaret Thatcher talking. I think that's patronizing of women. <laughs> it's okay. This is your show. And Kofi Annan said the empowerment of women is the most effective tool for development. To be impactful, effective board members, you must deliberately impact, imbibe leadership qualities. For emphasis, I want to remind us that a board position is a leadership position. Women must exhibit strong leadership abilities to be effective board members. As I said, integrity is a timeless and all-important virtue for a successful business leader. You have an obligation to be independent in your judgment. You must be resilient in the face of uncomfortable decisions. You must respect contending views and be humble enough to concede to superior reasoning. You can't be right all the time. Never forget that value creation for all stakeholders is the ultimate objective of business. Education is a lifelong venture for anyone seeking to be a successful business leader. That's why I always emphasize humility. You cannot be right all the time. But you must be intelligent enough to note that when you are right, press your issue and get it to a point when, if it becomes, he wants to snap the key, you know how to retreat. Diplomacy is key and is very important. It's, in any case, most of you have succeeded as, as wives, must have mastered diplomacy anyway. Yes, because the. the the mother-in-law has always been around. And I think whoever has, come, whoever has uh, managed mother-in-law successfully should be able to manage board diplomacy. <laughs> yeah, I can see some people laugh louder than the others. Education is a lifelong venture for anyone seeking to be a successful business leader. Never stop learning. When you stop learning, then the end is come.
of course, being, accommodate, being accommodative, it's a strong virtue. And I said diplomacy. Eleanor Roosevelt said that a woman is like a tea bag. And then you'll be wondering why. You never know how strong she is until she gets into hot water. So now I know how strong women can be. Because when I check how deep, I mean, the, the color of the, of the tea that is made, when you press it down, then you can know what women can make out of situations. Women supporting women. That's a point that I touched upon. The common stereotypes that women do not help or support one another or work for the mutual good of the of womanhood. I don't know whether that is true. Has it changed? I think it's changing. Yeah, although it's going to take time before you become president of Nigeria. <laughs> But your ambition is not really that way for now. You want to capture the corporate environment first, isn't it? Yes. I know. We are waiting for you. <laughs> so, organizations like WIMBIS have and are helping to debunk that myth. It is essential that women continue to work together to ensure that their seats at the table continue to increase and remain relevant. As I stated, I am myself a product of mentorship. Someone saw me in 1960, after my school sat. What happened was he came, he was general manager, which general manager at that time is the same like managing director now. He was one of the younger friends of my father. And he came and he saw me and said, Ogbeni, that's an old man, Ogbeni. Kiwe mshe. He siwe wa. Say, ah ah. My father said, call him and ask him. Where they be? So when I now went close to him, said, what was I doing? I said, I just finished my school set. And the principal has said that I should come back for high school. I said, Where is where for Baba Tidaba? Meaning that, don't you see that Baba is already old? Where is Shanure? Have mercy on him now. He then turned to Baba and said, oh, Benny, Bring him and let him come and start work tomorrow. And he remained my mentor. Debola knows the person I'm talking about. I think Ewan Day also knows. We all need mentors. To whom much is given, much is expected. But we all need a little help to arrive at our destination. Mentorship is not a one-way street. Therefore, mentors and mentees should impact each other's perspectives as they impact the respective journeys. Ultimately, my hope is that we can move the narrative and ensure that women inclusion on boards will no longer be a trending topic, but it will be a norm. It's my privilege to be amongst you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, sir. I've taken notes, I've thought, I have loads of questions. But um, before we move on, I'm going to invite Mrs. Abimbala Wright to join the chairman on the stage. And she would be the one who would conduct the Q&A session. I'm sure we have a thousand and one questions we want to ask. 
We want to dig deeper into the stories he glossed over, the names he didn't mention we want to know, the things he didn't say that some of us know we are going to ask. So I'm just going to um, set him up with his own microphone so that um, the question and answer session can start. Thank you, sir. Thank you. She's a princess. <laughs> she almost became the old by herself. <laughs> wow. There was so much in that presentation. Dr. Oba Tudeko CFR said that women have better judgment than men, that they're more intuitive and so many other very complimentary remarks. You look at his CV, decades of board level experience. Private sector, public sector, for profit, not for profit, been there, done that. So he would know about the strengths of women. So such words coming from him are true words indeed. Do we agree? Yes. Now, I picked up five key points from um, Dr. Utudeko today, and I will refer to them as the five C's. He spoke to capacity, that you need the skills, you need the experience, and you also need to continuously develop yourself. C number two is communication. Don't be aggressive. Don't be overbearing, but be assertive. C number three is confidence. You must have the confidence to express opposing view, your viewpoints, to claim your right. And really, part of the reasons why we want women on boards is for diversity reasons. So you, you, know, you don't have to follow necessarily the herd. C number four is club. He spoke about the importance of having a network because getting onto boards is generally by invitation. So you must have the exposure, you must be seen, and you must be heard. And C number five, and I think he said that was the most important attribute, is character. Character to ensure you only go the be best practice route. Don't be conceited. And also learn to accept opposing viewpoints. He reminded us that being on a board is a fiduciary duty. It's a leadership position, a call to extended responsibilities, a role fit for queens. I'm sure we're all queens here. So now we have an opportunity to glean further insights from Dr. Oba Otodeko. And because I'm holding the mic now, I will ask the first question. But before I do that, can we once again, again give a resounding applause, a standing ovation for that fantastic presentation? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So, question number one. And I think we will take three questions in the first instance, give um, Dr. Utudeko an opportunity to respond, 
and then depending on how we're doing for time, we can take a next batch. You said that, um, and this is true, we know, that not everyone is for us. So with your decades of experience on boards, particularly in view of your chairmanship roles, how have you been able to ensure that women are included in conversations and they're not just sitting at the table um, as tokens? So that's the first question. Now I'll open it up to the floor. Can you just indicate by... Okay. We will give first to the chair of um, Wimbiz. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure none of us is disappointed, but I'm going to make my question very short. You said you would tell us about Econet. I'm reminding you of that promise. So we want to know the story of Econet. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. When men say they haven't even thought about women being on boards, because we've had this discussion, some men claim they haven't even given it a thought. Where do we start the discussion from? Because I'm sure men have sat down and talked about this new trending issue about women wanting to be on boards. Where do we start the discussion with men who haven't even given it a thought? There are men who are opposing it. There are men who are fighting it. Some haven't even thought about us at all. Where do we start? We'll let um, Dr. Otudeko respond to the first three questions. Well, thank you very much. You will allow me to take it in which, whichever order. Um, I believe, uh, responding to the princess first, I believe that you guys are doing the right thing. You started and you are doing exactly the right thing. It is natural that men would want to keep the woman folk out. It's natural. But then that is also a function of the quality of the men. You know, because you keep away what is of value to you to your own detriment or at your own detriment. If there is understanding of the value of the contribution of women folk, oh, I don't think, because it's no longer, it's not, the call is not a call, a token call. It's a call to service. It's a call to leadership. It's a call to empowerment. It's a call to help in the process of building. And like uh, someone would say, ah, my, my boss likes me. Nobody likes anybody. Your boss likes you because you are contributing towards his progress. Because if the business is successful and you are a major contributor, he will like you. So, liking you does not mean that uh, you, are a, you are a man, just a man. The merit and quality of what you guys are already putting on table, certainly as, especially the, 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 the activities of those who have come ahead of you, who are taking the earlier seats, those activities have confirmed that ladies are required. When is a function of how diligent and hardworking those who are in decision making are. And I want to confirm to you that as I am here, continuously are we working on making sure that we identify and get women. In any case, you also know that statutorily and institutionally, it's becoming obligatory that, you know, um, diversity and 
feminine representation should be part of boards. So, it's not, even those who don't like it, they have no choice. It's already compulsory. Did you hear about Norway? Did you hear about FTSC? And so on and so forth. This is the trend. Nobody can stop it. It's a, it's a, it's a wild wind that has taken control of the so it's for you to continue to prepare yourselves and make yourselves available so that we can we can identify you and every time i'm available as your champion so through your through your platform let us know what is available uh, we keep on helping through your platform Econet story is a long story, but the conclusion is called Airtel. <laughs> I think that answers that. <laughs> Quite a lot of experiences, but here we are. And the place of women, I think I've taken your I've taken your question actually from my contribution to try to answer the princess question. The place for the woman is there. And those places are around the table. We have on Airbnb Old Co, 10 directors, and there are 10 women there. I'm sorry, three women there. Three, meaning 30%. And um, if, if and when we need others, we know where to look for them. Get your names on the WIMBIS database. So we'll take the next um, three questions, starting from the, the center table here. Can I, can oh, I ask Oh, okay, there's somebody, somebody oh, sorry, I didn't realize yes. that somebody already had. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Bisi Um Thank you very much, sir, for a very enlightening uh, presentation. I just uh, have a quick question. Um, in the course of your um, presentation, you had mentioned uh, loyalty as, um, as a key requirement, you know, uh, for an effective uh, director, and you actually used an expression that water shouldn't forget its source. Mm -hmm. um, also, in the course of your presentation, you had mentioned um, independence, independence as, uh, as a quality of an effective director. I know that a lot of um, directors, particularly women, you know, have a problem with trying to balance the both. You know, so they recognize the fact that they have been appointed uh, to the board by um, someone, you know, and they feel a sense of loyalty to that person, you know. But also at the same time, because they take their role very seriously, you know, they, they now then approach it with a mindset of wanting to add value, you know, and then so being wanting to be independent. Um, that has put some women or some directors, you know, but we're, we're, we're talking about women specifically, into conflict with their, with their nominator. I just want you to address that, sir. Thank you.
in humility, he was a chairman. And in humility, he yes, he, he, uh, he um, extended on that day. You can imagine a man on his staff, and I was coming into the hall because I was expressing he stood up. And I had to tell him, first, you didn't have to stand up for me, <laughs> no matter what. I'm just letting you know that this man is just a reaction. He's the one that I've been advocating. I'm talking of 40, almost 40 years ago. He's been advocating for women. And so I want to personally say thank you to him. Um, good afternoon, ladies. Um, my question is, one of the requirements of appointment on board um, is experience. And just like us fresh school leaders, I mean school leavers who don't get employment, they're always asking them to, for experience, have you gotten an experience? It's the same with board. If you don't have an appointment or um, on board, how do you get, gain the experience? Thank you. My name is Adi Dunfa. Sir, please share with us your most challenging board experience and the techniques that you use to steer it you know, most effectively. Would really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, um, independence and loyalty, I think that was uh, at the I think the answer actually is called discretion and wisdom. You don't need more than that. The truth about it, that is the answer. Yes, discretion and wisdom. Then, thank you very much, uh, Otuba. You have actually continued to make me proud. You remember how I used to call you? I still call you. How do I call you? Little girl. <laughs> She's actually a little girl, and uh, but whoever knows knows that she's also a grandmother of, I think, ten. <laughs> eight, okay. What's the difference between eight and ten? <laughs> Only two. Yeah, because it's actually a two-way traffic, a mentor and a mentee. It works together. The truth about it is that if the mentee, you know, does the right thing. And what, that, what is right? And that takes me to the question of experience. It's not experience of being on the board. It's actually exp professional experience. Your success in your chosen field. Because what is required on the board is for you to be a complement, a part of the board that would draw upon your rich professional background to make the board complete. Because the board itself, as you know, is just, is a, it's, it continues to be challenged to solve problems on a continuing basis. And that experience is not being a board member. There will always be a first, and that first what will qualify you for that force are those things that I mentioned. And I like the word that has been identified by a DME, which is character. Character is very, very important. In anything in life, I believe character is important because when you get the most brilliant people and you put them all together, you want to sit down, get home, Lie on your bed and sleep. 
left and right, which is where character is key. I hope I've answered the yeah. question. Experience. Oh, my most challenging experience. I thought I have succeeded in dodging it. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, every meeting, every meeting, when you are talking about a board, you are talking about the collection of human beings. It's like somebody came to me the other time and said, hey, that company is too political. Tell me which house is not political. <laughs> so, you, you, it's difficult to tell me. I don't even think it is right for you to tell you which one. A gathering of people which a board of directors is will continue to have what I would like to call continuous challenges about the best of problem solving. And I I don't want to tell you just one. When you have time, I will tell you about it. <laughs> so because I will tell you more than one, let us reserve it. But to let you know that most important attribute when I say is character. Character helps you to also override the political considerations that hold what now that satisfies you. Thank you. We'll take the next uh, three questions starting with Sir, you, you mentioned um, political considerations. As women, we're often we're in the minority. How do we achieve change without being disrespectful? Often we're battling against issues of age, gender, culture. Particularly as it relates to, and I think, sir, you're very well placed to talk about this, maybe a family a business with a founding shareholder or a situation whereby you have a majority shareholder, such as a multinational, or a dominant shareholder. How do we achieve change without uh, being labeled troublemakers, and therefore spoiling it for all the other women coming behind us? Please speak to us from your own practical experience. How does somebody in a minority view come against what may be the overwhelming majority prevailing view and still achieve change? Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ola Dutton, Motu Omada. And I just want to say it's truly an honor to be here and to hear you speak. Um, as someone that's um, a Jebu and my, I've cross married, both my parents and my friends in laws have always spoken very, very highly of you. And I just need to say that. Um, my question is around um, a good name and legacy. And I'm going to narrow it down to three questions. So, um, first thing, is the fact that part of the reasons why you've been able to sit on several boards has to do with the fact that you've been able to build several businesses that had legacy. Now, for me, one thing that is very rare in Nigeria is it's hard to find a good business, you move on, and the business still functions. So my question first is, how have you been able to achieve that with the companies that you started? You've moved on, and the companies are still running excellently well. Secondly, how do you take risk-taking decisions at a point when you had to push those companies further? And these questions might actually represent the interest of people that are running businesses and are trying to build businesses that has to do with legacy and a good name, because that is so rare in Nigeria. And lastly, um, as, as someone that, I mean, I, I'm friends with one of your daughters. You have young daughters, and I'm quite impressed about the fact that you've been able to empower them, and they've been able to literally run on their own. I would like to know the advice that you sat down and you told them when they wanted to start those business initiatives, what you told them. Because I think that it's just something that it's important, it's important to know as women that are going on board and also building businesses that have run a legacy as well. Thank you, sir.
politics is not democracy. So it's not about numbers. But of course, it's about survival. Survival is not about compromising on courage and boldness. It's also about discretion, which I have used the word discretion. Um, without sacrificing merit and your ethics. <coughs> it's a combination of all those things. It's not good to be in a, in a community or in a group one. One is tired a troublemaker, it's not good. And I don't want any one of you to go on board and get the title of troublemaker. Because a troublemaker might also be an unwise person. That is another name for a troublemaker. Whatever problem, if there is no more than the interest of the company, every contribution can be handled in a manner that one does not get the name troublemaker. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Therefore, politics is important. Politics about relationship, about respect, about the quality of contributions. Uh, let me, I don't want to give an example because it's not good. But let me say clearly to you here that people as a chairman, and I've been chairman for many companies, the people you like most are those who help you to solve them your problems. They are likely to be very brilliant and therefore uh, have something to contribute. So the ability to contribute without allowing the politics that you want to deal with to overwhelm the, the quality of what is inside your contribution will make you desirable to the chairman. And when you see chairman respecting you more, it is because the person is not a troublemaker. I think uh, we can allow that to, to be. So, uh, my friend, What's your name again? Your questions are so many. <laughs> yeah, you know, about the children, I think that, that I'm sure some of them are amongst you here. It's all about efforts to prepare people for real life. Because you can be the child of anybody. They are going to be yourself in the end. Because nobody stays forever. So that's what I tell to my children. And I've been saying to them since when they were young. You look after them, give them access, reasonable access, don't spoil them. And set them to be ambitious and try to be what you want them to be. Because children, you would know more than me that children do exactly what they see their parents do. You know, so if uh, if one is you know <coughs> the way I work, I don't see many people of my age who work like I work. And you cannot be in the same house with someone. Since when they were young, they've seen that I, I sleep last, I wake up first, I do many things together, and they see what I do. So, example is the best. You know, but then, as Christians, we have to pray all the time. You know, because it is the Lord God who shows mercy. It's not of He that labors. 
now you are, you are asking what's the other last... you you I think you are coming to too quick a conclusion <laughs> because I'm still around you. <laughs>
stories today and experience is about how to get in there from capacity, knowledge, vision, visibility, strength of character and all of that. Please, can you give three strong ones of how to remain in there without disrupting things? In the, absolutely, because women do not just need to get into the world, they need to be conducted in a way that they are not misconstrued or misunderstood to be too tough and packed out. Thank you. Very interesting. Both of you actually are saying the same thing. Both Chisholm and Yemis, I think we are saying the same thing. How do you, how do brilliant, detailed, tough women retain their position and relevance on boards? I think that's the summary. Well, uh, I think it, it starts from what is the what is the primary responsibility of boards? It starts from there. The board of directors is that vehicle for the implementation of the vision of the organization through policy formulation. Its businesses are conducted based upon information that comes from management by way of whatever means. Usually, they are usually board papers anyway. I commended, or I said that women on our board in LBN holdings actually read their papers more than, than men. If you say I said so, I said I didn't say so. <laughs> you know, you need rigor, you need character, you need discipline. Your contributions, you are, you are appointed to boards because of your experience, which my lady and the other end spoke about. That experience includes your professionalism, isn't it? So if you don't use it, then it means that the board is missing. A good chairman usually identifies people like you and you. And whatever you say is not thrown away. They can tell you that when I, the way I do it, I allow everybody, I allow you to talk. You've seen me before. I, we were together in the stock exchange. I allow you to say everything you want to say. You know, because in the process of you talking, you bring all that you want to bring out. That is the role of the chairman. It may not be what you want us to decide that will be decided. But when you see that your contribution contributes to particularly the kernel of the discussion, because you may, we have some people on the board who they don't talk, but when they talk, you have to listen to them because they see what others don't see. So long as you have not gone there, to be the champion. Good directors are good team players. Take note of that statement. Effective, most effective directors are team players. So if you are a team player, you make contribution, you are not a troublemaker, even though it, what you said was not taken, but you know it wasn't ignored. You know, I, I, they, they, I think there are three of them on the board who is there. I have a strong feeling that they cannot say that as hard as they work, as they talk, 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 that they are not listened to. You know, nobody goes to the board to be a champion. Even if you are chairman, if you go and try to be a champion, they will bring you down.
what you have forced amongst you also is a balancing act, including being a political person without being a democratic politician. <laughs> it's, it's part of it. But my way of looking at it is that, believe me, the business of running companies through boards requires the best in human attributes. You know, those attributes that are up there really um, elevating attributes. They are the best that you need in boards so that everybody who is on board is happy. You imagine that even you, even though you are amongst yourself, you are doing your politics, the entire staff and management, they are looking at you because it is you that form more or less the, um, the man through they are all looking at. Think about it also that the cohesion on the board and the quality of board decision affects stock prices. God forbid there is a crisis on the board. How does that happen? How does that affect the stock price? So it's that's why I say it's a leadership responsibility. People do not know how much we go through. After sitting on the board, sometimes when the board meeting is long, all this space, you have to go and especially have something done. It means that messages are going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's honestly it's quite an, an, an assignment. And I want to congratulate all of you for sitting down and being part of this because what I'm giving you is fact. It is fact, free of charge. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw that that question may not have been made for me, but since you directed it at me, um, have I ever turned down a purpose? Oh, definitely. I turn it down every time. You've forgotten that uh, I'm over to the <laughs> people, people may think that I'm also a magician. <laughs> so they will want me to come and be on their board, to be chairman, oh, definitely. You have to have the discretion to say no. In any case, may I ask, I want to ask three of you. I ask you, Devala. I ask you, Yemisi. Yeah, and who else do I know? Okay, Chiso. I want you to tell me how many you oh, and you, because you are also a politician now. <laughs> Just say number. How many board positions do you think a person should have accept in view of the current responsibilities of boards? Read and read and read and read. Because if you don't read, you can't participate well. 
if you don't participate well, you carry a responsibility. I think my view is three. And three if we want to do it well. Thank you very much. Fully wrap up the Q and A session. Um, you know, there's that proverb like father, like son. But I know there's also like father, like daughter. Could the children of um, Dr. Obaotunde of course stand up for recognition?
out of the blues one early morning, he just called and said, Fumi, come and see me in Lagos. My husband was beside me. I said, but Papa said I should come and see him. I started, I, I mean, I was scared that he never calls me like that. And then my husband said, I go and see him. And then I entered his office and he said, Fumi, I don't want you to go to Liberia again because of Ebola. I felt very, very touched. I just came back from Liberia. I didn't even remember that there was Ebola. Whether Ebola was there or not, it was my responsibility to be there physically. He didn't know that I'd just come out of Liberia. And then he said, no, I don't want you to go because... And I told my mom this story. My mom has his pet name for him. And her pet name for him is... Enitiolonrosimi. The person God has sent to me to take care of me. I don't know where it came from, but my mom is extremely fond of him. And so is he of my mom. And then I told them in the group company that I won't be able to sit on their board again because of Ebola. And they said, no, Mr. Robert, we can't afford to let you go. We'll arrange for the bank to have a telecommunication system, which the bank didn't have. And because they still wanted me to be on their board, they bought all those equipment so I could continue to participate at board meetings. But I've never said this before publicly, and I say it today from the very depth of my heart, that God will bless you. Amen. And that everything you desire for your children will come to reality Amen. in your lifetime. Amen. And that you will lead the remainder of your days in good health Amen. and joy and happiness. Amen. I'm not a pastor, don't worry. <laughs> this happens twice a year, every year. I'll have this conversation. I'll call my husband dead in the night. It is that time of year again. My husband will say, what do we do? Last year he had a brain wave and he came up and said, oh, I've bought the thing. And I said, how can you say that this is the thing for God? By the time I get there, there'll be millions of them. He's somebody, it's so difficult to give him a gift. I'll consult with his daughters and they'll tell me if you buy this, this is where it will go. If you give it this, this is where it will go. But uh, we set up a committee for this event to deal with the presents to give to you. Because I said I don't have any knowledge of what, even when the daughters advise us, by the time we get there, there will be 10, 20 of the same thing there. So on this occasion, we are hoping against hope that what we are about to present to you would not, in fact, I recall, I recall something, and the best time to ask is now. Anytime I go to the waiting room in his office, there's this huge television set there, and it's been sitting there for the last five years. I'm sure you don't even remember that it is still there. So in case you don't need it, I want it. <laughs> but on this occasion, we set out Bumi, Foluke, and Satsu. What do we give him? And then we came up with this gift, which we hope nobody else has ever thought of. And with the hope that it would stay in your office and you would look at it and remember this day for good because you impacted on so many women who could have been anywhere else but they chose to listen to your wise counsel. Can I ask Mrs. Yuwande Zakios to join me here? Mrs. Bumi Abodere Talabi. For Luke and please join me up here. Thank you very much. It is not your portrait, sir. Because looking at it, looking at it everybody will think that it is your portrait. It is not. But we hope that any time you look at this, you will remember today. And more importantly, the essence of your birth. Because this is about the story of the year you were born, 1943. And on behalf of every woman seated here, the members of the Board of Trustees, the members, <laughs> we present this to you. And we hope you'll enjoy it with members of your family. Thank you very much.
you very much, sir. If you would like to respond to any other things Mrs. Roberts said. <laughs> Well, I'm not shy, <laughs> so let, let, let nobody think that I'm shy. I'm not shy at all. I actually have a sense of fulfillment. Um, and God knows that I am happy when I see people making progress. It's my nature. It's actually in my family. My mother is always exactly like that. Let me tell you something that will shock you, but it's true. Although it depends on because of your age, it might shock you. My mother married wives for my father. True. Wife, not one. It wasn't for any. Light reason, I didn't get the right order. It was just to make the man comfortable and happy because she was busy doing her business. <laughs>
and your 46 years of board experience. I'm sure some of us here were not even born 46 years ago. It has been a powerful, insightful, and impactful two to three hour session. Some of the key takeaways as women that either want to be on the board or have been on the board is that we need to be humble, we need to be wise, we need to be team players, we need to exercise sound judgment, we need to be exposed, we need to be professional, and we need to exhibit integrity. Overall, you said, as we say in Credit 101, character, character, character. These are some of the attributes, sir, uh, that we need for emotional, that are emotional intelligence. And we need emotional intelligence to be an effective player on the board. Once again, sir, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. <laughs> to my co-participants, it's a full house. I'd like to thank you all for your time, for listening, for the questions, and we look forward to having you at the next Win Board Women Executive Training Program. Thank you all, and God bless you.